Hello, my name is Vichuda Nui Pollard Olu, and I am here to present a short video summary of organizational design, teamwork, and organizational change from Chapter 6 of our textbook titled Business Management. There are six main sections here, starting with important terms and definitions about the organizing function of management. Organizing function typically follows the planning function. It is concerned with arranging and assigning tasks and responsibilities for each job, structuring work such as grouping similar jobs into units or departments, and also allocating resources so that organizational goals and objectives can be reached. The organizing process leads to the creation of organization structure which is a system that consists of rules and policies to outline work roles, responsibility, and reporting relationships, including how they fit within the overall system. A structure can be represented by an organization chart as a visual representation of an organization structure as shown here. It is an example of a simple chart of a typical manufacturing company with the CEO as the top manager. There are four functional departments such as production function and sales function where the functional managers work under the CEO. In the second section, we discuss various key elements in organizational design such as the division of labor, and the chain of command. The division of labor is the degree to which organizational tasks are subdivided into separate jobs. It is illustrated in the figure here by the separation of production into purchasing, quality control, and manufacturing. The chain of command is an unbroken lie called the hierarchy of authority, which links all persons in an organization with the reporting relationships from one management level to the next. In other words, the chain of command shows who reports to whom. In the figure, accounting manager and financial planning manager report to the director of finance, who in turn reports to the CEO. Another key element of design is the span of control or the span of management, which is the number of employees reporting to a supervisor. It determines how closely a supervisor can monitor subordinates. For example, Director of Finance and Director of Human Resources, or HR, each supervises two employees. Director of Sales and Director of Production each supervises three employees. Therefore, we can say that they have a wider span of control. Another element to consider when decide is how much to centralize or decentralize the authority to make important decisions. Centralization means that decision authority is located at the top of the organization. With decentralization, decision authority is pushed downward to lower organizational levels. Formalization is another element. It is the amount of written documentation in an organization. Documentations include procedures, job descriptions, regulations, and policy manuals. Large firms tend to be high on formalization because they have lots of written rules and would, would be considered formal. Small firms, on the other hand, would have little amount of written rules, therefore are considered informal. Lastly, Another key issue is how to group common work activities together. Departmentalization is the basis for grouping of jobs into logical units with five common types listed here. 
For example, functional departmentalization groups work activities by functions that employees perform, such as production function or marketing functions. Product, customer, and geographic departmentalization, on the other hand, group resources according to certain products or customer groups or by geographical locations. The combinations of those six key elements that we had just discussed have resulted in two basic organization forms shown here. A mechanistic form has a rigid bureaucratic structure with a clear chain of command. Decisions are centralized at the top with high level of formalization. An organic form is the opposite end of the design choice, where the structure is more flexible with looser chain of command. Decision making is decentralized with law formalization. In section three, we will look at six common organizational structures, such as functional and divisional structures. Functional structures group activities according to their similar or related skills and use of the same resources. A divisional structure, on the other hand, is made up of separate divisions according to similarities or demands of products, customers, or geography. The figure shown here is a divisional structure under product group of canned goods, baked goods, or frozen food divisions. Another type of structure is a metric structure, which groups people and resources by function and also by product or project, as shown here. The metric combines advantages of both functional and divisional structures simultaneously. A virtual network structure means that the firm subcontract most of its major functions to separate companies and coordinates their activities from a small core organization as shown here. A team-based structure is where the entire firm is made up of teams that coordinate their work activities to accomplish the firm's goals and objectives. Lastly, a hybrid structure makes use of a different forms of structures that we had just discussed as shown here. The firm is divided into three divisions, where can and baked goods division are organized by function. Frozen food division is organized by geographic locations. Most large firms use different forms of hybrid structures in order to tailor to their particular needs. Earlier, we had looked at mechanistic form and organic forms. These two forms represent opposite design choices. This figure shows that, in general, a functional structure is the result of choosing a mechanistic form. A virtual network structure is the choice for an organic form. Various structures fall on this continuum. There are three important contingency factors that affect design choices here in section four. They are strategy, environment, and technology. The point is that there is not one best way to organize. To be effective, managers should design an organization to fit with its various contingency factors. A firm can follow a cost leadership strategy or a differentiation strategy. An organization that adopts a differentiation strategy should develop new and innovative products and bring them to market quickly. This requires flexibility and innovations that are enabled by organic design. 
A mechanistic form, on the other hand, would enable a cost leadership strategy. An organization operates in a dynamic or a stable environment. A firm that operates in a dynamic or fast-changing environment needs the flexibility of an organic design. In a stable environment, a firm would have a more mechanistic form. Another contingency factor is technology. It is a term that used to include computers, machines, and knowledge or skills and work methods. Service firms and manufacturing firms would employ different sets of technologies. Further, different technologies are associated with certain organizational form. For example, a mass production firm would have work activities that are standardized with wider span of control and centralized decision making. Therefore, the overall structure is mechanistic form. The fifth section focuses on teams and teamwork in organizations. A team is a group of employees working together, so it should have common commitment and purpose, complementary skills, and also mutual accountability. The team concept breaks down barriers across departments, therefore improve cooperation and coordination. It enables the firm to have quick response to customer demand and other environmental changes. Teams that are composed of employees from different departments of functions are called cross-functional teams. Others are self-management teams or teams with members who are geographically di dispersed and interact with each other virtually. They are called virtual teams. A team develops a certain level of team cohesiveness, which is the extent to which team members are attracted to the team and motivated to remain in it, and are committed to the team's goals. Team norm is a set of standards of conduct that is shared by team members and guides team members' behavior. However, Team members may experience conflicts from actual or perceived differences or incompatibilities among team members. There are techniques such as negotiation and compromise which can be used to deal with team conflicts. Lastly, we will look at organizational change as today's organization are facing more dynamic business environments. They need to respond to and adjust to those changes in order to stay competitive. Organizational change is the process by which organizations adopt new ideas or behaviors to increase organization effectiveness. Three types of change are technology, structure, and people change. Technology change deals with how the work is done, such as the use of new equipment and tools, including new work methods and work processes. For example, the development of information and communication technologies, or ICT, during the past few decades have had significant effect on all organizations around the world. Structure change pertains to structural variables such as procedures and job tasks. It is often needed after a change in business strategy. People change refers to changes in attitudes, expectations, perceptions, and behaviors of employees in an organization. Changes in people often involve changes in culture as well. Often, employees resist change as they have uncertainty about the outcome or feel insecure. 
Managers must manage organizational change for successful outcomes, especially when employees perceive the change as a threat or when the change effort is in trouble. Manager can positively influence organizational change by educating and communicating with employees about the change and by providing employees participation and employee engagement for those changes. In this chapter, we discuss the organizing process, including teamwork and organizational change. Top managers aim to assign and coordinate work by organizing effectively in order to gain competitive advantage. Thank you very much.